If you look worldwide, uh, the threat is evolving, the threat is changing, uh, and the ability of uh, the U.S. forces and their allies to, to keep up with that is, is vitally critical. So uh, both investment on the company's part, investment on the government's part, and, and our, our, our customers' part is going to be very critical. As we start to play in the network-enabled environment, and that multi-domain re really comes to fruition, it's making sure that we've got all the ties across weapons, across sensors, um, to be able to support that entire kill chain. And it's sort of right on that cutting edge of being that network enabled weapon. When you think of, you know, multiple syn synchronized layers of the network, this is just one of those weapons that's able to go in uh, be very accurate, make fast decisions, reprioritize with how fast the battle space changes. There are several advantages with it being a network enabled weapon. One of the main ones is it's moving targets. Once the weapon is released and it being able to talk back to the aircraft, the aircraft is sending signals on these moving targets. And what that allows the tri-mode seeker to do is really narrow in on the search zone that it's using to try and identify that target. It is an all-weather weapon. It can see through obscurance. It can see through uh, different weather, fog, sand, dust, uh, to be able to identify its target. And it's also able to hit mobile targets. We are currently addressing um, the U.S. government's uh, request for MCO GPS insertion into its weapons to really enhance that anti-jamming capability and provide that air rekeying encryption for the GPS signals. We're also looking at an improved data link for, um, for the network. We are currently fielded on the F-15. I think we did over 150 test shots in preparation to make sure that we really understand the capabilities of the weapon. We're really focused now on working on the F-18 and the F-35 by the end of this year. We're already trying to push the envelope. We always want more technology. We're seeing again, how do we become more survivable? How do we get further ranges? How do we improve the overall kinematics? How do we improve loadout? As, as we go forward, whether it be with hardware or with software development. The other piece is, I think is critical, is do we have the right capabilities, whether it's from a data link or secure communications, to be able to employ those weapons uh, across a broad theater and in extended ranges. Those are the kind of things that we're working and bringing into our weapon systems today. It is really just designed to support that, that air to ground mission. It supports the air interdiction and the air support to prevent the hazards for when the aircraft comes into that enemy territory to be able to neutralize those targets that are on the ground. So Stormbreaker supports those mission areas.